Good morning everyone and here we are with one of the best tanks in the world. This is of course a 1 in 70 second model of the South Korean Hyundai Rotem uh, K2. This is the K2M, the Malagasy slightly upgraded, slightly converted model for the great tank off. Now this is a superb model from Aliexpress. I've added a few extra bits, which you can see in one of my preceding videos. Um, basically, I've put a bit more top attack armor for the driver. I've put some uh, side era armor there on the side of the turret, and I've made uh, some side, uh, top attack era blocks here, um, just to make that a bit more um, stand out, because the blocks that are on the kit are very, um, uh, hard to see. Um, this has a remote weapon station which I've added, that's a Yao's model studio, again from um, Aliexpress. Um, and it, this has the CAPS Korean uh, Active Protection System on it. Now the Norwegians have been trialling this but I think they've gone for leopards because well, I don't know why, really. I mean, I'd have gone for this, um, but that's just me. And um, the Polish army are buying these and um, apparently they love it. Now, Poland is spending a huge amount on defence um, and um, the South Korean K2 for them is a key uh, product and one that they uh, really, really like. Um, and I can see why. This is a superb piece of equipment. It has free crew. Um, which is slightly different to most uh, NATO four crewed tanks. There is a Turkish variant of this called the Alte, which has a uh, four crew and a different turret. Now, what does the Korean variant have? Well, it has a uh, hard kill APS with a cap system, it can have trophy. It has a radar system here at the front on both sides. It has soft kill um protection suite as well. It's got an L55 main gun, which is uh, very powerful, 120 millimeter. And it has 16 rounds in the turret bustle there with blow off panels. And it can have 24 rounds down here under these uh, reactive armor. I think they're blow off panels as well. Um, it is absolutely superb, superb bit of kit. Um, apparently it's one of the most advanced tanks in the world. It uh, weighs about 56 to 58 tonnes, so it's lighter than most uh, Western equivalents. I, I don't know why we're faffing around with Challenger um, 3, to be honest, when we could just buy these, but I guess we want to uh, reinvent the wheel and have something worse to um, give the illusion of uh, British jobs. Um, obviously, if you do work in the Challenger 3, I'm not knocking you. Um, but uh, what Hyundai are doing in Poland is entering into manufacturing partnerships anyway. Uh, so that point doesn't really stand up uh, to much scrutiny. But um, yes, I really like this. It's got a very good suspension system. It's a very integrated um, product, uh, very good. Now, in terms of hard kill and soft kill, what's the difference? Well, hard kill is like sort of a shotgun uh, throws out these grenades, they explode, they can take on RPGs, they can take on incoming uh, anti-tank guided missiles. Um, soft kill is slightly different. So soft kill will create a optical, a smoke screen around the tank, or it will create a thermal screen around the tank. Now, why is that important? Well, <sighs> javelin missiles and enemy anti-tank missiles that operate in IR guidance don't operate on magic. They have sensors uh, called optophilometers uh, and um, magnometers and uh, infrared uh, philometers inside them. Uh, they work to an image of the tank. They work to computer guidance. And if you have a cloud of thermal bursting uh, infrared uh, disrupting, effectively like a smoke grenade, boof, then the idea is, is that it confuses the missile as it comes in. It can't get the track. It can't put the picture in. It can't work out where it is. And it can't work out where to strike the tank. So that's kind of how that soft kill works. Um, that's a simplified version of it. It's a bit more complex, but um, the patent for that was released in 1994. It's publicly visible. So if you want to check out the patent for how those missiles work, top attack missiles, 
just go on to um, the patents and you can see it. Now, the end laws work on a different one. They work on predicted um, sort of movement patterns. But again, the, the idea is, is that you're throwing these um, systems out. Now, the predicted movement one is harder to do because obviously the computer is predicting that you're going to move here and you probably can't rotate a big object like a tank away from it. So the end law does have some advantage, even though the end law is a short range weapon. So for stuff like IR guided um, and laser guided um, ATGM missiles, that's where the soft kill is useful and the hard kill is there to pick them up as they come in. And then you've got the era blocks here, top attack era blocks here and here and uh, era along the side here. Now, this is an AliExpress model. Um, I absolutely love AliExpress. Um, very good pricing once you start building up the coin discounts and um, very uh, good shipping. I've never had an issue from them, um, which is pretty amazing when it comes from China. This is 3D printed. It is a model kit, so you have to cut the um, prints off and then build it, but it's really good. So where does this compare? Well, this is one of the auto loaders. Um, so the auto loaders are tanks with um, the auto loading function, and we can put this into its position. So we've got the uh, Type 90 MMM, which is the upgraded uh, Russian entrant, which the Americans are kicking off about. We've got the Japanese uh, Type 10 Lancer Evolution 4, which is uh, next in line. So we're looking at sort of uh, late 40 tonnes here into the early 50 tonnes uh, with the upgrades. Then we've got the Shah Leclerc, which is um, a visiting UAE tank, but it's representing the Leclerc family. Then I would go uh, the K2M there. And then I would go the, oh, this is the Trumpeter Joys, um, the ZTZ-99 uh, here. Although I'd probably put that on this heavier end of the scale because the KF-51 Panther, probably just slightly lighter now. So these are um, some of the auto-loading uh, tanks which are entering the uh, Great Tank Off. Not the UAE, Charles Leclerc. I've got a Series 1 which I've upgraded. Uh, Macron's plan to get some hard cash into the French economy. But you can see that the K2, uh, as standard with just this, a small air, um, extra protection, places really favourably amongst all of these tanks. Now, the KF-51, of course, does have 830mm main gun. I've done separate videos on all of these. The ZTZ-99A, uh, whilst heavily upgraded by the Malagasy's to make it more formidable, does unfortunately have a carousel autoloader, um, as does the uh, T90 MMM, um, although it does have a protective uh, cover, um, I, and uh, the T90M does have rounds in the bustle, but they're not part of the autoloader system. So again, the Malagasy's are working to upgrade all of these, um, except for the Charles Leclerc, which is the Azur model from the UAE. Now, in terms of why or whether the Malagasy's will buy the um, uh, K2, it's one of the strongest contenders for the great tank off con competition. But uh, kit wise, uh, even on AliExpress, you're looking at £30 uh, for these, including the shipping and everything. And uh, the Type 10 itself is £8.99 off eBay. Uh, add in uh, the um, Meng um, M1A2 uh, Tusk to get the Tusk plates. Um, you're looking at, at uh, £20 because they have a really good price. So you can buy, uh, you know, almost two three of these for the price of two of these. So that's what it may come down to. Um, the uh, MMM uh, type, uh, sorry, uh, T90 um, MMM, uh, well, they're four pound and four uh, on AliExpress plus a bit of shipping. Um, and the uh, applique armor there is just plastic hard as is uh, the top attack armor and the type 10. So cost and economy, even in a one in 70 second does come in. Otherwise, um, budget lady will um, put me in the greenhouse, I think. Um, the plants won, by the way, so the tanks have had to move, so they've relocated. But here they are making a rare uh, special military foray onto the breakfast bar. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.